O João Tech Store falou aí sobre manipulação, né? Voltou a falar sobre o lance aí do, do futebol brasileiro, do tal áudio que ele tem. E agora ele mencionou o jogo do Palmeiras, né? Ele até então não tinha mencionado o jogo do Palmeiras e mencionou nesse vídeo aqui que a gente vai ver. E, cara, ele parece muito disposto aí até, digamos aí, as últimas consequências, né? Porque ele tá realmente batendo muito nessa tecla e isso pode, pode ir longe agora. É, eu falei isso lá no Instagram, né? E, e repito aqui. Se for verdade, irmão, Pega quem tiver envolvido e pune, tá ligado? Se for verdade, eu não tenho menor, até se for do Palmeiras, o que eu duvido muito. Pega e pune, né? Pra mim é assim que funciona. Agora, se não for verdade, tem que dar ruim pra quem tá acusando, né? Quando você acusa alguém, você tem que ter provas. Então, é assim que funciona, pelo menos, por enquanto, né? Mas, vamos ver a fala dele aí e, cara, é isso, né? Vamos ver até onde esse homem aí vai com esse negócio. Deixa seu comentário, seu like é muito importante, tá? Se inscreve no canal, bora. Talked about it coming out of last season, difficult end. Uh, you know, I'm the guy that says no rear view mirror, right? Yes. That's my belief. I look forward in life. Um, we learned some things. We learned from the past. We learned what happened last year. Um, many of our fans have a good idea of what they saw happen on the field. We have a very good idea of what was happening off the field. And it's my job to learn these things, to stay on these things, to defend this organization. I came here because I was invited to help bring new ideas and new things to Brazil. And what I learned about some of the problems of the past, you generally hear people talk about all over the world. It's a problem in global football. People think I'm attacking Brazil. I'm not. Um, what I'm, I'm trying to do is bring some of what we've learned globally, where they're trying to fix match fixing. They're trying to change it. Uh, we're trying to improve referees by training, pay them more, make them go full time. These are the themes that, you know, I brought to Brazil as one person among other leaders of SAFs, uh, uh, among other reformists that are here in Brazil, things we talked about in Libra. This is the benefit of forming the new league. So why are we talking about corruption? The coach, the players, they're talking about next year. You see, we're ready to go like everybody else. Everybody's getting ready for the new campaign. Um, one of the unfortunate uh, bits of aftermath of my public statements that night, when I went to the sideline of Palmeiras, I already had the evidence of things that happened prior to that game. Uh, we have a knowledge of you know, it's not about referees. It's about a couple of referees, right? We had knowledge of what had happened in some games. We have an eye in the sky that has never before been possible in watching football games. It's machine learning. It's computer vision. Uh, we all have the capacity as human beings to watch individual moments and plays. And we, yes, we see the field, but we're, we've got a lot of other things going on. The average person cannot digest millions of pixels and movements and kinetic action all over the field. We can focus on a few things. Computer vision allows us to see everything, every minute of the game, every key moment, every second of the game, all the players measure their tendencies, see what's wrong. Um, so we're talking about this to make sure that last year never happens again. And I'm talk not talking about the Botafogo fans saying we can never again see a lack of motivation. We can... Our players had to deal with things that were going on off the field, and I believe they knew it. And I saw, I don't know, 14 out of 17 games we won, and then the world changed. Hmm. Really? Did that just happen? Did suddenly everybody get to get bad? Um, no. Uh, yeah, football's bad. Other players are good. We had great competition. We had great teams. The people we're going after aren't the players of Palmeiras. There's not one player at Palmeiras involved in the match fixing that we're looking at in Palmeiras games. There's not one official that we are aware of in leadership in the organization, not a coach, not anybody at Palmeiras that we believe is involved, that we know is involved in fixing Palmeiras games. This is a battle for the soul of our sport and we all need to be together. There is not one allegation that I've made against Edinaldo and what was lost in translation for my emotion. You look at the film. I never once said this man is corrupt. I don't know him. I've never met with him. He is a leader of this 
very big organization and he has his job and I have mine and we have not come uh, to communicate. Um, I can tell you I'm talking about corruption because I'm being sued for comments I made about corruption. Uh, I feel very comfortable that, you know, there's an olive branch in both directions between us and CBF as we get ready for the new season. I believe that they've also, I think, probably been looking at the issue too. It's impossible not to. And we feel right now, my current belief, people need to stop putting words in my mouth. Talking about me and Ed and Aldo, like he's an agent of change in a different way. I'm an agent of change in a different way. We all have our approach. I believe he is going to be on the right side of history, and I believe he's going to be helpful, but we have to provide the evidence. So what's happening with a lawsuit, my perception is it was filed. Uh, it was emotional. Um, I think he had concerns about what he thought was said, and... I think he may have very well been justified to defend himself and his name based on what he thought I was saying. I think I've learned a lot about communication in this country. And so what I've done, I would ask everybody in leadership in the sport to do a little bit, right? If you're in the sport court and you're a judge, stop talking to the press about the crazy gringo and covering his bad performance because you are on the wrong side of history you don't have the data. You haven't seen the evidence. When we tried to show the evidence to the sport court the first time, it was 74 pages. It was match fixing on a specific game. It was people coming and paying players to tank a game. And that got 18 hours of consideration by the sport court before they immediately came out with a statement and said, this is nothing. There's no legal grounds. Well, 10 years of technology, reputation, the people that created that report, um, the people that created that report uh, come, they've been in Brazil looking at these games for long before we got here. And they were immediately discredited by people that don't want this conversation to say, well, Botafogo hired him, you can't listen to them. Oh my goodness, that's unhelpful for the evolution of our sport. Uh, they were here before us. They'll tell you, they... They have clients that lose money, professional organizations and betting companies and governing bodies and others that, that want a clean game. They have others that lose money when it's a fixed game. That's why they were here. That's how we met them. That's how we found out about match fixing in 2021, 2022, 2023. I didn't make this stuff up to cover the fact that Adrielson had an, a highly inappropriate red card that even the sport court came behind afterwards and said, highly inappropriate red card. Change the game. Change. Imagina, cartão vermelho inapropriado, você fazer a falta no cara que tá indo direto para dentro da área e ser no último homem. It's the championship. And if I talk about it, people in the press are saying I'm crying. I don't cry. Desculpa. É, eu, eu fico lembrando, cara, desculpa pra parar aqui, é que assim, além do Adriel ser expulso, pra, claramente uma expulsão ali, tem o pênalti do Tiquinho Soares logo na seguida, né? Poderia não ter dado pênalti, já que a parada tá tão manipulada assim, mas eu vou falar, eu vou dar minha opinião sincera no final aqui. Come at me if you're gonna say that. I'm here communicating with information. I'll go on TV, I'll be interviewed, but the jokers that are in positions of power that want to minimize this because of reasons I, 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 I don't understand. I'm not here to impugn anybody's integrity. Evidence. Um, you know, look, we're talking about corruption because the lawsuit is still open. If you want me to stop talking about corruption, don't keep an active criminal lawsuit against the leader of an organization in court for months and months and months, it'll be years going into the next season. I was invited to help build the sport, but I'm in court defending my desire to push reforms in this sport. So I do think that lawsuit's going to go away because I know the people that filed it seem to be agents of change in their own way, making a lot of progress on these issues separate from us. I don't think that's a fight that's going to last long. 
I, um, yeah, I think, I think we're going to be fine with the CBM. So let me talk about everybody else. Globo, when I give you a direct quote and I ask to be recorded and I put it there, if you are not trying to manipulate my language, then why do you wrap it in an article about a lot of other nonsense that I'm not talking about? I have never once said that I have a referee on tape involved in match fixing a game in Syria or related to Botafogo in Syria or Serie B. That's never been said. So the incredible lack of direct, commu- in the, the lack of direct communication that happens here by a major media company, I'm not going to allege what their agenda is. I'm learning down here. But why would Globo take the straight audio tape of my comments yesterday uh, with a trusted reporter who maybe was in a fight with his editors? I don't know. And the article I read today is, a, a, is an incredibly misleading mischaracterization of what I said. They have the tape translated, put in Portuguese. I gave them permission. What I read this morning, the referee tape to clarify, my state of mind at the end of last season as I saw what we believe and can prove now was corruption was environmental. I was given a recording by an official connected with CBF. It was validated, authenticated. It was uh, told to me by credible authorities here, not journalists, not agents, that it was also in the hands of the police, that it had been in the hands of governing bodies for a year. And it was a lower division. It's a game that is known to us. It's, there's a coach, there's a team, there are people that we have authenticated. And it is a tape of a referee talking about he was upset that he lost money because the game he was trying to fix did not go the way he was trying to influence. He was specific. He gave a minute on the clock that he awarded a PK that he shouldn't have. And the striker of the ball in the PK hit the post and he complained and he said, I did everything I could. Um, and I will trust others to do the Portuguese translation because I will produce his audio today. Um, it's a karaoke accent. It allowed us to identify the ref, uh, the point in time that he talks about in the game, the event in the game, the PK, the extra minutes he talks about on tape that when that didn't work, he tried everything, but he couldn't find another PK. I believe this is what the translation will say, but um, in my language, I want to be very careful that people need to rely on the tape, not on what I'm saying. And so I think what concerned me at the time is that people often talk about corruption and they throw players into the mix all the time because that's the easy one. Somebody was paid for a yellow card. It's not even illegal. People find out. Uh, they apologize. I don't know what the recourse is. Remedies are in different parts of the world. But around the time that that tape uh, was in the hands of governing bodies, there was a match fixing report that was also produced. I believe it was sent and we provided evidence of this to the court already. Um, the match fixing report related to a game in the end of 2022. It was a Palmeiras game. Uh, there appears to be no evidence that Palmeiras was involved. It was Palmeiras Fortaleza. Um, that evidence was sent to the CBF. I don't know who it got to at the CBF. I am not alleging that it made it out of the mail room at the CBF. I wasn't involved. So I have match fixing evidence that we've now looked into from prior years before Botafogo was involved. The the jokers out in the world that talk about us crying, do I look like I'm crying? No, no. No, I'm not crying. I'm doing my best to help. So these this company was here before us. They were analyzing games before us. Betting companies lose money when there's match fixing. Why do they hire them? Well, they can't fix it, so they don't want to lose money. I would suspect that they hire firms like this because they want to set the odds. Uh, somebody's going to have to translate the gambling numbers to 
to adjust for the risk in that particular game that one team with consistent manipulation, uh, not speaking about Palmeiras specifically here, but talking about the concept. If there's a team that has a lot of activity, a lot of strange betting activity, uh, manipulation happens, well, these guys know it. They don't go to the press. They're running a business. They're trying to run an actuarial business. So that's why we're talking about this. That's what our evidence shows. Look, we talked about it coming out of last... Acabou a fala dele aqui, cara, é isso? É, mano, ó, vou falar sinceramente, eu duvido que tenha manipulação do futebol brasileiro, não duvido. Eu, em 2005, né, que o Corinthians foi campeão, e não é porque o Corinthians foi campeão, é por tudo o que aconteceu. Eu parei de assistir futebol brasileiro, parei totalmente, abandonei mesmo, depois que eu voltei, uns anos depois. É, mas ele faz acusações graves, né? Ele fala ali sobre um jogo de divisão menor... Né, que, que tem áudio do, do, de um árbitro com sotaque carioca e tudo, então me parece bem específico. É, fala ali de Palmeiras e Fortaleza, né, que é, puta, foi um jogo que o Palmeiras empatou com um jogador a menos, né, então não sei exatamente do que ele está falando. Vocês lembram que o Zé Rafael fez o gol ali, a gente estava com o jogador a menos, jogo difícil pra caramba, um 2x2, meu Deus do céu, acho que foi um dos mais difíceis da reta final. Então, cara, é o que eu falei. Se for verdade, mano, que puna. E puna real, assim, que tiver envolvido. Agora, se ele tiver blefando, vai dar ruim pra ele. Porque ele tá fazendo um barulho absurdo. E falando muita coisa genérica, né? Ele tá falando muita coisa genérica que, que parece que de alguém que tá fazendo rodeios, assim. Então, se você tem prova, você tem que já logo jogar a parada, né? Mas, enfim, o STJD deu, acho que, três dias pra ele, né? Provar. É, aqui tudo indica e ele vai ter que se virar com essas provas que ele tem Mas são acusações realmente muito graves, mano Se for verdade vai causar algum barulho E se for mentira, ele além de prejudicar ele mesmo Ele prejudica ainda mais o Botafogo Que já não tá voando, né? Aí vai ficar pior ainda Então vamos ver o que vai acontecer aí, né? Mas o homem tá que tá aí, beleza? Deixa seu comentário aí, seu like é muito importante Tamo junto